In this video, how to add HDMI smartphone mirroring to your vehicle. It supports Netflix, Hulu, YouTube, all applications. Navtool is the only company that offers this product. Any Android phone will work in any vehicle with this interface. If your vehicle does not have Apple CarPlay, take advantage of Navtool's product and install it today. This demo is for the Chevy Tahoe years 2015 to 2020. This particular demo is being shown in a GMC Yukon. However, any Buick, Cadillac, Chevrolet, or GMC vehicles will also be compatible with this device. They all have identical screens. The trim panel and the surroundings may look different, but the screens are all identical. Therefore, this device will work in any of those vehicles. This is a two-part video. Part one, product demonstration. Part two, product installation. This is your factory menu here. This menu is run from a computer somewhere in your car. Our device does not affect this menu at all. Our device uses the screen or monitor of the car to display Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, or HDMI smartphone mirroring. None of the car's original factory settings or factory menu will be affected in any way. To switch the screen from the factory image, so it's like Think of it as a house TV, right? This is your factory image. This is HDMI 1, right? We want to switch to HDMI 2. So from video input 1, right? Let's see the factory image that you see. It's video input 1. We want to go to video input 2. You press and hold in top left corner for a few seconds. And then you get into our menu, which comes from our module that you installed. All right? This module comes, the basic module comes with HDMI input and four camera inputs. If you have a factory rear view camera, it's going to work as before. You can buy optional Apple CarPlay and Android Auto module. However, if your vehicle is equipped with factory Apple CarPlay and Android Auto module, it will work as before and you don't have to purchase it. If your vehicle does not have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, you can purchase Apple CarPlay and Android module. This is optional. So we have Apple CarPlay or you can connect Android. You have Android Auto will show you. So how do you operate this stuff? So we know that it's working. This is your factory screen. Now we want to switch from factory. We want to switch from the image of the factory screen so we want to change input. We're going to call it an input. We want to change from seeing a factory stuff to seeing our module. You press and hold the corner for a few seconds and it switches. This shows you that you're currently home button. So this is not a button. This is home position. This is your home screen. If you didn't purchase optional Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, nothing is going to be here. It's going to be grayed out. Keep in mind, if you have factory Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, it will work as before. To go back to the factory screen, it's a power button right here. Powers off our interface, switches back to the factory stuff. To go back, you press and hold. Now, settings. You can adjust brightness, reset the interface, and do some adjustments for optional Bluetooth module to control. Reboot device, click yes device has rebooted let's test out factory feature so this car has a factory camera factory camera works as before with all the lines now we added left camera with the left turn signal you can see left camera this particular camera has lines you can buy camera without lines if you add a right turn signal camera again you got a right turn signal and watch camera the camera is not adjusted we just installed to show you you got camera with lines, you can buy camera without lines. And you adjust it to view anything to see the blind spot or anything you want. We also added front camera. So in reverse, you get rear camera. When you put it in drive, you have front camera. Front camera works up until 10 miles an hour. Once the vehicle reaches speed of 10 miles an hour, front camera automatically turns off and it goes back to the factory screen. So it's going to go back to that screen. So. If you're on a factory screen, everything works as before without a change and you can use it, you know, if you're using factory navigation, for example, and you're doing left turn signal and you want to see what's in your blind spot, obviously you adjust the cameras the way you like it, as much view as you want to have, but you'll be able to see left camera. 
that's on a factory. Now we're gonna switch to the interface. In the interface, you can do right camera. So if you're driving, you can permanently watch right camera on a screen. If you wanna watch left camera when you're driving, over here, press left camera. If you wanna watch forward camera, press forward camera. This car is equipped with a factory rear view camera. So when you put a rear camera, it's blank. There is an optional wire that you've seen when we did the wiring to connect the factory camera through this interface. It is not recommended because you have a factory camera. So when you put it in reverse, obviously you're gonna see a factory camera, but you can do that. To get out of this menu, press anywhere on the screen. So if you're just driving and you wanna start watching your left camera, there you go. Or you wanna start watching your right camera, there you go. You can switch through all the cameras. And you can add rear view camera. There's extra wiring may be required to power up the rear camera. So that's why it's not recommended. If you really want to watch rear view camera, we recommend you installing an extra camera. It's an option. So you can, while driving, you can watch rear view camera. It's going to be an additional camera because the fact that the camera doesn't really make sense. As you put the car in reverse, you can see most of the camera looks down. You can get the camera that has further angle. Okay, those are the factory features. HDMI, you can connect any HDMI source. You can mirror iPhone or Android devices. iPhone is recommended to mirror through Apple's own Lightning to HDMI adapter. However, you can also do mirroring of Android device or wireless mirroring device or Apple TV. Anything that has HDMI, you can connect to this. We're gonna demo iPhone mirroring, but you can mirror any other phone that you like. HDMI mirroring. It mirrors everything you see on the phone. There is no limit, everything works. Netflix works, Hulu works, all applications works 100%. So whatever you see on the screen, you're gonna see, you know, exact image of that you're gonna see on the car screen. So. You can do Google Maps, Waze, YouTube, whatever it is you want. So let's do a YouTube video. Let's start a YouTube. And over there we have a little video clip. It's a commercial. And you get to see everything on the screen directly. There is no limit. It works Netflix, Hulu with the only one that do HD mirroring and support all the applications. Mirroring is pretty much self-explanatory. Basically what you see on the screen is whatever you see on the phone screen, that's what you see over there. No lag, no delays, everything works. Audio plays through car speakers, of course. That's it, that's mirroring. You can connect anything they're just HDMI input same as found in the back of your TV in your house whatever you connect to HDMI cable box PlayStation Apple TV this is HDMI input primarily use is for mirroring to get out of the mirroring screen press anywhere on the screen and it's going to exit out now after we exit out we want to mirror we want to demo Apple CarPlay and Android Auto Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is identical to the one that is found in your car when it comes factory. There is no difference. It is same Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. There are two things to remember about Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Number one, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto never have to be updated. All updates happen right here in the phone. Everything is updated only inside the phone, so you never, ever, ever have to worry about it. When the phone is unplugged, this is grayed out. You see it's gray. Or when you did not purchase Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. When you did purchase Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and plug in either Apple iPhone or Android phone, this lights up so you can press it and select anything you want. And on the phone, it's going to say either CarPlay or Android Auto. CarPlay is always the same in every car in the world. Why? Because everything happens here in the phone. All the updates are in the phone. 
you never have to worry updating this. We're making this video when it's iOS 11 and it's about to be iOS 12 with support for Waze, Google Maps and other third-party apps. This does not have to be updated. Once you update to iOS 12, it will automatically work. In 10 years, it's gonna work. In 20 years, it's gonna work. As long as Apple maintains it here, this will never have to be updated ever again. Let's do quick demo of Android Auto. Android Auto is same in any car. You never have to worry about Android Auto updates. Android Auto will always work, no matter what. Android Auto is only updated inside the Android phone. You don't have to worry about updating the hardware of this product or anything else. It will always work no matter what. Keep in mind that any Android phone will work and Android Auto looks identical in any car in the world. If you have factory Android Auto, you don't have to purchase the additional Android Auto module. If your vehicle does not come with factory Android Auto, then you can use this Android Auto. You got all the features here. This is the button over here, you press it, return to, gets out to the factory menu. This is to enter it. This is your phone to dial. This is back to your home screen. This is your audio, and this is your maps, and you can select here, Waze or Google Maps. So you can select either uh, Google Maps, or it's gonna load up Waze for you. You can go back to the factory screen, or play music, or simply get out. All the apps that you can load, you load them directly from the store. So basically you go into the Play Store and you add the apps that you want. It is Android Auto just like found in any other car because Android Auto lives only inside your phone. It does not exist anywhere else. It's full touch screen. You see I can press play and it plays. I can press pause and it pauses. I can open over here. I can close. 100% like original because keep in mind, Android Auto is only inside your phone, so it will look identical in any car in the world that has Android Auto built in. Let's quickly demo Apple CarPlay. Keep in mind, Apple CarPlay only lives inside your phone, so Apple CarPlay is only inside here. You never have to worry about updates. iOS 12 comes out, it's going to work here. Once it's updated here, you never have to worry about updating anything over here. Oh, Today and 20 years from now, only updated inside the phone and with always going to work. That's how CarPlay was designed, so only one place updates the phone. How do you control? This is just like original. If your vehicle has built-in Apple CarPlay, you don't have to purchase this. If your vehicle does not have Apple CarPlay, you can take advantage and purchase our CarPlay solution. It's 100% like original. You can swipe or you can press down here goes to the right, goes to the left. 100% responsive just like original. Start the app. Over here you got recent apps, maps, tune in radio, phone calls, all your favorite apps. You want to go home, press home. You want to get out, press home, press return to go out. We also have added for you a um, bunch of other um, Siri press and hold and Siri comes out press to go back and again we have a lot of applications whatever app is available in the App Store that supports CarPlay you can add it this is not mirroring this is 100% CarPlay if you go into phone settings you can easily rearrange the applications we're gonna go into the CarPlay and you see over here take a look you see, I want to move maps to the first position. Press and hold. I'm moving the map. Map is in the first position. I want to move map over here. Map is in the corner. Press return to go back to the factory screen. So let's go over the features again. You got HDMI input for any HDMI input. Apple CarPlay, uh, Apple iPhone mirroring, Android mirroring. So you can do YouTube, Waze, Netflix, Hulu. Apple TV, anything that you want. Right camera. Again, you can use any right camera that you want and adjust it to any angle you like. Left camera. Front camera. Rear camera. You can use the rear view camera on this menu, but we recommend installing another camera. 
We don't recommend using factory rear view camera for this. Okay, automations. Left turn signal, left camera. Right turn signal, right camera. In reverse, you get rear view camera. And in drive, up to 10 miles an hour, you got front view camera. Now, if you're in Apple CarPlay and Android Auto mode, let's say Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, again, camera automations. Left turn signal, left camera. Right turn signal, right camera. In drive, front camera. In reverse, rear camera. Front camera shuts off automatically when you reach the speed of 10 miles an hour. You can get out. If you are in mirroring menu, so we, if you're mirroring a phone, same thing. All of the automations work in any menu. It doesn't matter where you're at. So basically, if you're in HDMI, we don't have anything connected right now. But if you're in HDMI, Again, automations work. If you're just driving and you want to watch your left camera, for example, while you're driving, and then you decided you needed to park, you put it in reverse, the factory rear view camera comes on. You put it in drive, the front camera comes on. Keep in mind one thing, if you did not add, add if you did not add any of the cameras, you don't have to worry about it. So, for example, you see with left turn signal, we got left camera. With right turn signal, we got right camera right but if you did not add any of the cameras nothing is going to happen so if you're in the factory menu and I put left turn signal you got left camera if you did not install left camera left camera will not turn on in the right hand signal you put you see right camera if you did not install right camera the right camera will not turn on in the reverse your factory camera is gonna work regardless factory camera overrides all other features in drive, you got front camera. If you did not install front camera, nothing is going to appear. It's going to go back to the screen. So, if you did not install left or right turn signal cameras, left or right turn signal will not change any of those menus. It will just show you the factory screen. If you're in Apple CarPlay and Android Auto mode, again, if you're in Android Auto, left turn signal left camera, right turn signal right camera. If you did not install any of the cameras, nothing is going to change. What's in the box? Okay, you will receive an interface. It has main plug, two digital plugs to send HD video image to the screen, all original plugs, HDMI input, USB for Apple CarPlay, Android Auto or charging, status LEDs, programming port, then you got optional Bluetooth for programming it's a Bluetooth module you can program the interface wirelessly or use it if you want to control your smartphone through touchscreen installation is very simple you will receive a main plug like this this main plug plugs it into the unit just like this you have audio output that connects to car audio system so you can hear audio from your from Apple CarPlay Android auto or mirroring you have four camera inputs you can add up to four cameras and if you're installing Apple CarPlay Android auto you have a microphone input to install a microphone so four camera inputs you you can install extra cameras or don't install any if you have factory rear view camera factory camera will work as before without any changes so you don't have to do anything for factory camera to continue to work then you got this cable that's installed at the vehicles radio module you got this connector that plugs it together with this and this connects to the screen module then you got a second connector we're going to show you all in details that connects to the radio module it has a single lead that also on this same harness you got single connector for this so this has a long wire over here you see that long wire so you can install this at the radio module and route the long wire to the screen module and connect them together like this because this cable connects to the screen module and then connects to the main interface harness and then you got two digital cables you want they plug in over here into the module and 
this plugs in into the screen module and the factory cable from the screen module plugs in here okay so one more time very simple and easy installation this cable plugs into the 16 pin harness at the screen module and it has two connectors at the end you take the interface's main harness that is 100% plug and play if you're not adding any cameras you don't have to do anything and you plug them together so the screen module plugs into the interface main harness the interface's main harness plugs in into the module like this then you got another harness that plugs in at the radio module we're going to show you all the locations it has that long wire with a single wire at the end with a four pin connector and that plugs in together here to the connector that connects into the screen module and then you got these two digital cables that plug into the module and they plug in this plugs in into the screen module and the factory cable from the screen module plugs in in here this interface is installed at the screen module there's plenty of space in any Buick Chevrolet GMC or Cadillac to install this so all of this is installed at the screen module except this cable with a single pin is installed at the radio module and it comes with a very long cable you can open this zip tie and you're gonna have very long cable so you can route this to any location you like we're gonna show you exactly how it's installed step by step this is just a short preview do not forget to program the interface all interfaces are stripped blank as they need to be configured by the installer or end user programming process will take less than one minute and can be performed using Windows or Mac computer. How to update the software? It doesn't matter what you're updating, whether you're updating camera interface, video in motion interface, wireless mirroring interface, or Apple CarPlay interface. The process of update is identical. Updater works on Mac and Windows based PC, so we have for both Windows and Mac. To update, you need a cable like this, it's a standard cable. One end of the cable is micro USB and the other is a standard USB. This goes into the computer and the micro USB goes into the interface. Connect this end into the computer, Mac or Windows. Connect the other end into your interface you're updating. Again, any interface. Once the interface is connected, everything information is going to appear on the screen. And install desired software. Just for the test purposes, we're going to show you how to update it with uh, Cadillac CTS software, Video in Motion and hit install. So now it's installing and shows you progress bar and a percentage. So it takes only seconds to update it. So you download the updater from the website for Mac or Windows, that's gonna take you approximately 60 seconds. And then the update process takes only another minute or so. This is how to update the interface. So we're showing you the update process. And the entire process only takes less than a minute. Okay, the update process is done. And it's 99%. It says do not disconnect. In about a second, it's going to tell you that it's complete and you can disconnect the interface. There you go. Device settings updated and you're done. So entire update process takes only about two minutes. You download software from the website for Mac or Windows, about a minute, and update takes another minute. And all you need is a cable like this. So USB cable to micro USB. Vehicle disassembly. This panel comes out very easy. You open the armrest, 
Over here, you got this panel that comes out. So you simply open it with a plastic tool like this, just to release this panel. Now that you release this panel, this panel from the back, just pull it up and it's going to come out. And it's just clips, they're metal clips, so you can remove this panel as many times as you want. So just give it a pull and it comes out. The radio module is located up here. You can access the connectors. You see, there's nothing there. We're going to show you what's behind there. In this particular car, it's easy to access radio module. You open the glove box, you drop it down. Don't forget to remove the release. So you got on this side, you got this release over here. Let me show it to you. The release, you got to remove it. I'll show it to you in a second. Once you open the glove box, behind the glove box you'll find the panel that comes out. I'm going to show you this panel, it's very easy. You got screws, one, two, three, four, five, and over here on the side you got a six screw. So you're going to remove those screws, so this is just the cover panel that comes out. And then you're going to go, and you're going to find the mud sitting behind this metal bar. See right there, you see this blue plug? That's the module you need right there. It's sitting behind the metal bar in this car. So you open the glove box, you'll see the metal bar, not in front, but behind towards the engine bay. And the, you need the blue plug and you need the 16 pin gray plug. Alright, these are the two plugs that you need. So we're gonna unplug them and access them, we're gonna show you. So this is right there. You see, green, blue, this is the module that you need right there. Interface installation. This module right here is the radio module. You need that second connector, that green connector, the big large green connector. In some radios, it's not even there. The gray one is the one that you need. That is the connector that you need for all your installations this one right here so that's what we're going to be working with you're going to see in the next slide you're going to see the picture of the radio module and it's identical in every car now that you have unplugged this wire you take the supplied one so that's your radio module you just seen the picture of the radio module that is your radio module this is where you're going to plug in this cable that we gave you. So you're going to plug in the supplied cable as follows. We're going to go ahead and plug in this. You plug in what you unplugged previously from. And then you're going to plug in this back into the radio module. Okay, and now you have the single long wire because your radio module can be located anywhere in the car, right? So you have left with the single module and this particular car we need to run it from the back all the way to the glove box, all right? But we're just doing the testing so before we want to close the car up, we want to test that everything works. But you have an opening behind here to go directly into the glove box. So you're not going to have any problems of sending this cable directly behind the glove box. But that's your entire installation, it's all plug and play and you have the plug and play connector in the back. Now we need to go behind the glove box and find the screen module. In this car it's behind the glove box. In some cars radio module and the screen modules are together. It depends, but they usually close by. In some cars, you can have a screen module on the front, a radio module on the trunk, but that's just a couple of cars, uh, like Cadillac CT6 and similar. Uh, all Chevys have it pretty much in the front. All Chevy Silverados have it right here in the front. Uh, Chevy trucks, pickup trucks, basically in the front. Uh, SUVs have it one here, one behind the glove box. So now we're going to go look at the radio module. Go ahead and unplug the blue cable. 
behind the at, at the screen module take this cable plug it into the blue cable that you unplug take this cable plug this and back into the screen module okay so when I have two ends you're gonna take the module and you're gonna plug those ends in before we do that we also have this cable this cable right here you're going to unplug the black cable you're gonna plug the black cable in here and you're gonna plug this end back into the screen module okay we got two cables and we got two ends over here the single wire that you ran from the other side you're gonna plug in here together you're going to take you got one end left you take the main harness that plugs into the box that has all, all the RCA if you're adding extra cameras and you're gonna plug it in here it's like a puzzle, it all connects together. You can't go wrong because all connectors are different. It's hard to miss. Okay, now we have plugged in everything together. All we got left are your three ends. And they're all different. Take your interface, plug in the main harness. Your installation is done. That's it. It takes a couple of minutes to install the whole interface. You can plug in your mirroring or anything else into this module and you're ready to go. Whether it's CarPlay, Android Auto or mirroring or cameras, your installation is done. It's 100% plug and play. After you finish the installation and you test everything, reassemble the vehicle and enjoy the product. Thank you for watching. Please click the link on the left to subscribe to the channel or click the link on the right to watch the full video.